Welcome to this daily devotion for Monday, August 9th, 2021. I'm Pastor Mark, along with Pastor Wesley. We serve as the clergy of the United Methodist Church of New Lenox and welcome you to this time where we can grow in love of God and neighbor. We are using the resource A Guide to Prayer for All God's People by Reuben P. Job and Norman Shawchuk, available at Upper Room Books at cokesbury.com if you'd like to follow along. Our theme this week is The Mystery of God's Gifts. So let's take a breath, center ourselves, and hear the invocation as we step into the presence of God. Lord Jesus, life of God hidden deep within, give us today your gift of life and nourish it until it is full born in us through the power that is yours alone. Amen. The mystery of God's gifts. Our theme psalm is Psalm 145. Today I will read it in its entirety. There's a word or phrase that speaks to you. Underline it, mark it, take note of it as we continue to look at this psalm throughout the week. Psalm 145. I will lift you up high, my God, the true King. I will bless your name forever and always. I will bless you every day. I will praise your name forever and always. The Lord is great and so worthy of praise. God's greatness can't be grasped. One generation will praise your works to the next one, proclaiming your mighty acts. They will talk about the glorious splendor of your majesty. I will contemplate your wondrous works. They will speak of the power of your awesome deeds. I will declare your great accomplishments. They will rave in celebration of your abundant goodness. They will shout joyfully about your righteousness. The Lord is merciful and compassionate, very patient and full of faithful love. The Lord is good to everyone and everything. God's compassion extends to all his handiwork. All that you have made gives thanks to you, Lord. All your faithful ones bless you. They speak of the glory of your kingdom. They talk about your power to inform all human beings about God's power and the majestic glory of God's kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingship that lasts forever. Your rule endures for all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all that he says, faithful in all that he does. The Lord supports all who fall down, straightens up all who are bent low. All eyes look to you, hoping and you give them their food right on time, opening your hand and satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, faithful in all his deeds. The Lord is close to everyone who calls out to him, to all who call out to him sincerely. God shows favor to those who honor him, listening to their cries for help and saving them. The Lord protects all who love him, but he destroys every wicked person. My mouth will proclaim the Lord's praise and every living thing will bless God's holy name forever and always. Amen. Again, if there's a word or a phrase that spoke out to you today, take note of it. Let's come back to it. Our gospel readings throughout this entire week come from the gospel of Matthew. Today we are in Matthew chapter 8, verse 1. Matthew 8, 1. Now when Jesus had come down from the mountain, large crowds followed him. A man with a skin disease came, kneeled before him and said, Lord, if you want, you can make me clean. Jesus reached his hand out and touched him, saying, I do want to become clean. Instantly, his skin disease was cleansed. Jesus said, don't say anything to anyone. Instead, go and show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded. This will be a testimony to them. God bless the reading of the scriptures today. Today, our theme is the mystery of God's gifts. And sometimes the way Jesus acts and the things Jesus says, let alone the things of God, are a mystery to us. Why did Jesus 
not tell this man to proclaim him. We talk about evangelism, going and proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. We who are saved, we who have been cleansed, we who have been or experienced healing, don't we have a call to go out and share the good news? Well, maybe Jesus is offering us a little bit of insight into what true evangelism is. It's not just piling on words. It's not just expounding upon mysteries. It's being a living testimony, a witness. What did Jesus command him to do? Go follow the rules of his tradition. Go follow the laws of Moses. Make an offering and let that be a testimony. Now, the man had great faith. I love this. Lord, if you want, you can make me clean. And Jesus says, I do want to. How much so in our lives does Christ want to cleanse us, to heal us, to remove our fear and anxiety, just like we would want in any of our friends and family and children? We want the best for them. How much more so does God want for us and Christ want for us? Our reflection today comes from Letters from the Desert by Carlo Corretto. God's call is mysterious. It comes in the darkness of faith. It is so fine, so subtle, that is, that it is only with the deepest silence within us that we can hear it. Let me read that again as I stumbled over it a little bit. God's call is mysterious. It comes in the darkness of faith. It is so fine, so subtle, that it is only with the deepest silence within us that we can hear it. I believe God has a call on each of our lives. That God is calling us to at the very least, partner with God in the reconciling story, in the resurrection story, in the ministry of all time and space and people and history. To be partners with God in creation, in stewardship, in restoration. But each of us has a specific way to live into that call. Just like every church has an identity to live into our global mission to make disciples for the transformation of the world. Each individual congregation lives that out in different ways. So too does each individual Christian fill in to their spot. I've been called to the ministry of the ordained elder. That's a specific call. I was called to marry my wife, Jennifer. That is a specific relationship. We were called to become foster parents to three children whom we adopted. That was a specific call. Sometimes I'm called to go here and do that. Those are kind of general daily calls. What is God calling you to do? Take time to reflect today, to listen deep within ourselves. Am I even asking the question, God, what am I called to do today, 2021, the next five years, the next 10 years? Sometimes it's scary because God may call us to places and times and into relationships that are uncomfortable, that are outside of our immediate circle. But every time I have said yes, I have been blessed and equipped and moved. So I encourage you to listen. Live into the mystery. And see where God is calling you. Today we pray for those closest to us. There are so many in your life I know who need your prayers. Pray for them and then reach out to them. Let them know that you are praying for them and that you are here for them whatever they may need. Let us pray. Lord, you have surrounded us with 
family and friends, people dear to our hearts. Each one of those people in our lives has a struggle, has a need, has a prayer request. Allow us to be in prayer for them, with them, to walk with them, and to walk towards you. We pray this in your holy name, and we pray the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, until tomorrow, I leave you with this benediction. And now, Lord Jesus, illumination of the mystery of God's unending love for you. Give us the grace to shine today as one of your lesser lights, illuminating the way for others to come closer to you. Until tomorrow, friends, goodbye and amen.